then this may be one of the most important things you've never heard of. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Hey folks, Robert Milton coming back at you with another weekly chapter of Sawing with Robert Milton at Hobby Hardwood. And this one can get really down in the weeds and I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna kinda keep it high level. But what I'm about to cover is if you saw high grade hardwood, then this may be one of the most important things you've never heard of. If you're a professional or if you're a hobbyist and you're bored at night watching <laughs> my YouTube videos, um, go to the NHLA website and start reading. They set the grade and the standards for every board sold professionally in the United States. The NHLA allows a considerable, a ridiculous amount of bow in a board and still meet high grade. If you're buying hardwood lumber, you don't want any bow in a board. Bows that, you know, you stick the board or you look down it and it goes, looks like a McDonald's arch, right? If you're building furniture, you don't want that. If you're buying it, you don't want to it. And perhaps if you're sawing it, you don't want it, but you don't have any way to, you, you don't know what to do about it. You keep sawing wood and the boards keep coming out looking like Fritos and potato chips. Well, hopefully that's one of the reasons you watch my videos because pretty much every video that I'm sawing, you're gonna hear me stress or say or harp on watching the stress while I'm sawing. And that's huge. But the other thing you gotta consider is you'll always hear me say, in some species, cut the sapwood out. Get rid of the sapwood. Sapwood's no good. Burn the sapwood, turn it into charcuterie boards, turn it into a live edge slab, it sucks, it's sapwood. So there's a word you've never heard of, maybe. Martha's driving a forklift. She's working, I'm filming. Chip's sleeping. So there's a word that you need to be aware of that you've probably never even heard of in reference to wood, because like I say, it's down in the weeds. But when you're sawing high grade hardwood, walnut, cherry, some other species, anything that has a very distinctive hardwood sapwood boundary, the word you need to know is called extractive. Extractive. You got your sapwood, you got your heartwood, you got your juvenile core. When you look at this and you look at that, you say that's gotta be a different kind of wood. Everybody knows that the sapwood is alive. That's where the tree grows. That's where the, that's where the sap is, or that's where the water flows. Everybody knows that the heartwood is in walnut. This is what you want if you're making furniture. It's the dead wood. And what I'm gonna tell you is that structurally, the sapwood and the heartwood is the same at a cellular level. And you go, yeah, okay, so what? Do not reach for the remote control yet. You know, um, Bassmaster is not gonna start for a few more minutes. So, so then you go, well, if, if this and this is structurally the same, then why is Robert always sawing a sapwood off? It's because of the extractive content. It's a fancy name for AI, you know, artificial intelligence, extractive, that was a joke. Please don't get me on that one. I couldn't help it. I still laugh at that one. Um, I'm not supposed to be political though, so I'm not going to be. As the tree grows, the cell structure in this is kind of open. I mean, water's got to move and sapwood's got to do its thing, right? And as it changes from heartwood, I mean, sapwood to heartwood, the heartwood fills up with a crap. That's not really crap. It's clogged with material. Cannot shrink as much as the sapwood. It's gonna try, but it can't. So the ratio of the shrinking of the heartwood to the ratio of the shrinking of the sapwood, even though they have the exact same cellular structure, is different. All right, 
How many of you guys did I lose? Y'all need to go up and go to the bathroom or something? Because I feel like I do. I don't know if I got it across, but I'm going to use it. Here's an example. And I don't happen to have one real handy because I am out in the log yard. Here's how it goes. Take, take two sponges. Just go get your wife's sponges. <laughs> don't tell her. Get two of them. I mean, if she's going to get pissed off, just go ahead and get two of them, right? I mean, honey, I don't know where those things went. The dog wants to eat them. Let's, let's walk through the backyard. Um, take one sponge, fill it up with water. Take the other sponge and go out in the dirt and jam as much dirt and crud as you can into that sponge. I mean, I'm talking about fill that thing up with dirt till it's a block of dirt. Okay. Put it in the water. Take them out. Guess what's going to happen? It's probably pretty obvious at this point. The sponge that doesn't have any dirt, I mean, it's just not clogged with dirt and crud, is like the sapwood. And when it shrinks, it's going to shrink as it dries, everything shrinks when it dries, it's going to just shrink down. The heartwood on the other hand, or the sponge representing the heartwood, is full of dirt that you just ground into it. When it dries out, it's going to try to shrink as much as it can too, but it can't because it has dry dirt in the pores now. Those dry dirt represents extractives. So by that nature, the, expunge, the sponge with extractives in it cannot shrink as much as the sponge with no extractives that is clean. And even though they have, it was the exact same sponge, or two of the exact same sponges, the, the one with no extractives is going to shrink just a little bit more than the one that's clogged up with dirt and crap that doesn't shrink. The reason it's called extractive as a broad term for everything that's in the heartwood is because using proper solvents, you can't extract it. Just like you take that dirty sponge and you put it in a, your wife's washing machine, try that. Tell her I said you could do that. Don't do that. Uh, that she'll be mad at me. Um, put that, wash the mud out, extract the mud or the dirt, and the two sponges will start to behave almost identical. So then you got to go, well, what are these extractives in a tree? Surprisingly, in the lumber industry, depending on the species. Some of the extractives that are found in the heartwood are removed on purpose because of the properties that they have that heartwood has, as in rot resistance, potentially bug resistance. I mean, you've seen cedar oil. I mean, where do you think that cedar oil came from? Plum trees? No, it's an extractive cedar trees. When you cut a board that's across this interface line of heartwood and sapwood of quite a few species, not all, but quite a few, the differences in extractives between the sapwood and the heartwood, when it dries, will cause board deformation. And I will go to some pictures that I took the other day and you'll be able to see like an edge or something like that where the sapwood Pulls, and that's what you've heard me call it before. It's called sapwood pull. So some people, when you talk about sapwood and heartwood, and they'll say it has the exact same drying, uh, exact same drying volume. Uh, you can Google it real quick. Just type in difference between heartwood and sapwood drying due to extractives and you will find paper after paper after paper that not only talks about it, but it will give percentages. Some trees like poplar will not dry as different heartwood and sapwood. Some trees like red oak, yeah, red oak will and that will impart drying stresses on your boards and you'll get warp twister bow and people who are in the industry will go it doesn't matter the amount of warp twister bow isn't enough to make any difference and they're correct if you're going by the NHLA rules because they allow they allow a lot of warp twister bow if you're like me and you, you saw a board as flat as a pancake you put it on the pallets and you come back a little while later and that thing's turned into McDonald's arch 
That'll just piss you off. Pisses me off. So that's why I wanted to find out what's causing that. If I have completely confused you, tell me in the comments. If, I've, if you're going to argue with me, you know, go ahead. I don't care. I know what I'm doing. And if you don't believe me, go do some research and you will find the general, the general conclusion is extractives will cause different drying volumetric changes. However, in some species, it doesn't matter. The other thing that you will notice as I'm sawing up some of these walnuts, um, you'll see a lot of stress in the sapwood just by itself. And on this video, I'm actually gonna cut some sapwood off and I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna try to get that camera where it is literally watching that thing peel up like a carrot. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.